In today's video, I wanted to take a look at the macro controls mapping. So I have a session pulled up over here, which is something I'm currently mixing and I'd like to use that um, as the reference. Okay, so here we have some cellos. Let's kill the reverb for these. Also, I need to take my kick out of solo safe. And I currently have black box on this, but what I wanna do is let's use, we're gonna use red light distortion for this example. All right, first things first, I'm just going to reset a couple things over here. Uh, I'm gonna move over to the op amp setting. Make sure our input is at zero, distortion's off, drive all the way down, mix 100%. I wanna go with two stages and let's center out the output gain here. So we shouldn't have too much of a difference. Off. Okay, so the first use case I wanna take a look at is if we are adding drive to this plugin or any saturation plugin that doesn't have an automatically linked um, drive section with the output that's bringing it down as you drive it further, then it's really hard to make an honest AB comparison. The minute I turn this up, it just sounds a lot louder. So we need to compensate for that. That's fairly easy to do. We just kind of do like an A, B. And you want to get an approximation where the levels are about the same and that'll allow you to make a, a decision better. So I'm going to pin this plugin and let's just anchor it at the top here. Now on the currently selected track over here, if we hover over this icon or choose F11, uh, we can open up the channel editor. Now within the channel editor, I don't think this is new to anybody, it gives us the ability to link different parameters from different plugins on the same channel. You can link them to one knob, which is kind of like a macro knob. So first thing I wanna do is I'm going to connect drive to knob one. So now if I adjust this macro knob, I'm adjusting the drive here. Now the minimum setting is gonna be zero and the maximum setting in this case is going to go to 11. So that's the first step. And if you just wanted to do that, it'd be very easy. You wouldn't have to open the plugin GUI. You could just map out certain uh, parameters from different plugins across these knobs. But the way that I want to use this is it's, it's a little bit different. What I want to do is basically create um, a macro control using the uh, macro mappings over here that will allow me to push the drive a little bit further. And as I'm pushing the drive, I can back off of the output stage. So we have step one done, that's very, very easy. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna map this output control to the exact same knob. Now, the minute I do that, you'll notice that these are completely linked and they're in their full range. So the drive goes from zero to 11 and the output goes from minus 24 to 12. Now what we really need to do here is come up with something that kind of makes sense. So at this setting over here where we had the drive at about five and a half and I had this pulled down somewhere about here, about like minus six or something like that, that was a pretty good AB. So I wanna kind of use that as my anchoring points. Okay, I'm going to just pin this and the first thing we need to do is click the macro controls mapping knob. Now, based on the knob or the button that you've mapped out, you can select either one of those over here, and then you can see the targets that have been assigned. Okay, so first up, I wanna take a look at this. There's this thing that happens with red light, um, at least in the op amp, where it, the minute you go to 11, it gets a little bit, well, not a little bit, it gets a lot louder. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna change the range. So what this means is basically that, let me just, let's, Let's turn the, the macro control to its max setting. And then you notice because we've clicked this drive, the target curve over here, I can now adjust the minimum and maximum values. Now this doesn't mean that you can't dial these in on the plugin. What it does mean is that this knob is only controlling a specific range. So right away, I'm gonna pull this down till this gets to just about like 10 and change, somewhere around there. So that's going to be good, okay. So that's the first step. And now I can adjust this macro knob. I'm just using my mouse scroll wheel because if I click it, I lose my focus of this graph. The other thing I could do is making sure that this is selected. I could use my fader port macro controls. This is the way I usually do it because it's pretty easy. Okay, so that's my first step is that I've, I've adjusted the maximum range of the drive and I've just cut it off at kind of like 10. Now the second thing we need to do is we need to make sure that this one is inverted and also not just inverted, but that it's at a specific range. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is let's click this one over here. So I'm going to select the output gain and I'm going to click the, uh, the graph over here. And now with this, I can start to make some adjustments over here. So first things first, I'm going to invert this because that's what we want to do. Now you can see as I move the macro control up, I'm doing this in my fader port, that these are inverted, except for the ranges here don't really make sense in terms of what I want to do. So when the drive is all the way down, I want that range, this maximum range to be somewhere around zero or as close as I can get to it. So that'll be fine. So now what that means is at zero, we're at zero output. And then as I push this higher, it's going to bring it down. Now we don't need it to bring it down 24 dB. I think we could probably make that something a lot less. So let's drag this up and let's go with something like, I don't know, like minus 13. Okay, so now that we have this graph done, let's see how this sounds now. Now, if that range doesn't work for you, let me stop this for a moment. If that range doesn't work in the maximum setting, we're just gonna open up the wrench icon again, click here. Maybe I've brought this down a little bit too much. I'm just gonna increase this, and you notice as I increase it, you can see the actual plugin GUI changing. So this now becomes really useful to me to use as a macro. So if I play this in context of the track, It's very easy. So for any plugin where you don't have like an input setting and an output setting that we can adjust, this is a very easy way to be able to do that. So that's one use case. Now you might be saying, okay, well that's great, but that is like, that's a ton of work to do in order to just get a distortion setting. Okay, so that's true. But the benefit here is that once you've saved this mapping over here and you've, you've gone through and you've tweaked this, we can then save this as an effects chain, even if it only has just one plugin. If you save an effects chain, it will retain any mapping settings that you've done. So in those cases, I would probably just get rid of these three plugins, and then I could create an effects chain. So I'm gonna go store effects chain. I could call it red light, and I could just call it saturation. And then if I wanted to add something in the description, I could say in like gain length or something or gain compensated. Whatever, whatever I want to do, whatever makes sense to me, and then I can save this. Now, once I save that, it is now available. I may have to uh, rescan my presets, but it will now be available, and I can recall that very quickly. So, if we take a look at this exact same example over here, this is our mapping editor. If I was to remove everything, we'll go with remove all, then we've lost all that work that we did there. If I reinstantiate that same effects chain, which is red light saturation, now it's there. And I have that ability to kind of inverse link the gains. And again, very easy for me to make adjustments to this. Okay, so my gains now are inverse linked. And as I adjust the drive section, then it's gonna compensate by pulling the output down. And that allows me to kind of make decisions more informed based on whether it sounds better and not just whether it sounds louder. So that's one use case. And of course, if this was a different plugin, then the same thing could be done. If, if I had like a red light distortion over here and then I had a mix tool after it, you could do the same thing where you're doing this type of behavior if you wanted to. Now I wanna take a look at another use case, which is something that I tend to use a lot. And I'm gonna actually remove this effects chain. So we're gonna go with remove all. We're gonna set up a new effects chain. I'm gonna put two instances of the fat channel. So this is fat channel one. And for this one, let's say that we wanted to go with this compressor over here. And maybe we wanted to go with a really specific equalizer. So we have a signal chain and then we wanna try something else as well. So I'm gonna do another fat channel but this time I'm gonna choose something completely different. So maybe with this one, I wanna go with the brick comp and I wanna go with the uh, solar, solar 69, which is like a Helio style EQ. So you dial in your settings. They could be completely different for each one of these over here. Um, you, get, you get it working and then you're having a hard time a being between the two of them. This is another case where we can make the same adjustment. So I'm gonna open up the channel editor I'm gonna open up one of the fat channel plugins. Just put this right over here. 
And I want to link both of the bypass controls to a button. So in this case, I can just say button one, and then I'm gonna to go to fat channel two, and I'm going to link button one to fat channel two. So what this now means is that this bypass button, let me just scoot both of these over a little bit. This bypass button will now bypass these plugins, except for that's not gonna work out in terms of us a beam. So once again, we open up our macro controls mapping, and this is really super easy. I'm gonna select the button and I'm going to choose one of these, just click it and then it inverts that. So now watch what happens when I click this. I can easily toggle back and forth between these different settings. And this could also be, maybe you've made completely drastically different EQ decisions and you're not sure which one. This is a really great way to just be able to invert the bypass, link them both to the same button and invert the bypass and then you can toggle back and forth between them. Not really triggering that much compression here or anything. I have to pull this back quite a bit in order to get that. This is triggering some compression, but now I'd be able to have a way that I could easily decide whichever one I like better. And the benefit of this is this one does not take that long to set up at all. It's literally, you know, clicking to link the bypass buttons to each of the plugins. And then once you have them open or once you have them linked, it's just a matter of opening up the channel editor and just opening up the mapping controls, selecting the button and then choosing to invert one of them so that this button will just toggle those bypasses back and forth. And I know we have the new uh, mix scenes that were added recently, but to be honest with you, this is the way that I actually prefer to work if I'm trying to A, B something, because I noticed that when I'm doing the, um, when I'm using the mix scenes, that it, it, it seems like it actually unloads and reloads the plugin, whereas I just wanna like toggle a bypass between the two of these. So this is something that it's not new by any means, this has been out for a while, but it's definitely useful. And once you kind of get the hang of it and really specifically, um, using the modifying the curves and modifying the minimum and maximum values and assigning that and inverting things if you need to, it can be a really, really useful uh, tool to use. And this is regardless of whether I'm in the box mixing with a mouse or if I'm working on my fader port, it is one button which I push in the currently selected channel and I have all of my faders and all of my buttons available so I can press that. So I will often use this to control a lot of different things. That being said, it usually requires a bit of finessing with adjusting those curves. And then once I have those curves, it's very, very simple. I will basically just save an effects chain preset. And once I've saved my effects chains presets, they're very easy for me to load. Like I can remove all of these and I could go to this effects section over here, go up to the top. I have my main outs. So I just drag and drop this in. This one can load up. If I have any macros assigned to here, that's something that can be loaded up. Same as well here for my listen bus. I have my main outs on my listen bus, my post inserts. Right now, I don't have anything assigned to this, but if I select this and just drag in my post inserts, I have two functions that are assigned here. I have a mid-range EQ, which I can bypass and unbypass un to check my mid-range. And then I have this bypass toggle which toggles my sonar works between my two different sets of monitors. And I basically just use my macro controller for that. Um, on, on this particular one, once you open up the macros and you have your listen bus selected, I can reach over and adjust and swap between my two different sets of monitors. And those are all running the sonar works calibration. So definitely worth looking into. If you haven't taken a look at the macro controls and messed around with the graphs, adjusting the curves, inverting things, I would definitely recommend it. Anyways, that's all the time I have available for today. I hope that you enjoyed this content. If you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I will do my absolute best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.